have four different places I'm going to read from tonight. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Greek word for the Word there is logos. In the beginning was the logos. That means thought or plan or purpose. And the logos was with God. God's thought, his plan was with him. And God's thought or plan was God. Then in the, just cross the page, in the 24th chapter of the book of Luke and verse 44. Jesus has risen from the dead and he's met with his disciples. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then look at verse 26 and 27. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things to enter into his glory? Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them all the scriptures and the things concerning himself. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, that's the Old Testament scriptures, the things concerning himself. Then in John 1 and 45, Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him. Who Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Then in John chapter 5 and verse 40, excuse me, John 5 and verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they, the scriptures, which testify of me. I, I bought a book some time back. And the name of the book was Jesus, the ultimate, the ultimate ology. Jesus, the ultimate ology. And uh, that word ology, it means study. It means study, a study of. Anthropology is the study of man. Biology is where man and life in general. Then the study of crime is criminology. Uh, the study of, of, of death is 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 eschatology. I didn't say that quite right. Ideology is a study of ideas. Ethnology is a study of cultural heritage. Embryology is the study of embryos. Astrology is the study of the stars. Etoology is the study of causes. Paleontology is a study of human-like creatures. Paleontology is a study of ancient life through fossils. Psychology is a study of the mind and the behavior. And then uh, uh, pharmacology is the study of drugs. And I, I want to preach to you tonight for a little while, if the Lord will help me, on Jesus, the ultimate ology. 
If we're going to study about anything or anybody, we ought to study about Jesus. I want to talk about Jesusness. Jesusness. When you get the N-E-S-S on as a suffix, it, it, it lets you know the cause or the condition or the quality or the state of the prefix. Sickness. Silliness. Stupidness. Laziness. Stinginess. Holiness is a state of being holy. Stinginess is a state of being stingy. Sickness is a state of being sick. So I want to talk to you about Jesusness. Glory to God. And the passages that I've read to you on this evening, it talks about how that the prophets and Moses and all of them prophesied about him. Jesus himself said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they that testify of me. So if you want to help me for a little while tonight, I want to preach to you about the greatest and the most ultimate ology that ever has been or ever will be. For it had not been for the ology of Jesus. There would be no, there, there would be no biology. Or any of the ologies that I am and that I gave you tonight. Jesus is the ultimate ology. I'm afraid we have, we know too much about too many ologies and not enough about the Jesus ology. Yeah, but if you can't explain, if you can't explain astrology, I want to be able to understand the ology of Jesus. Yeah, but I, I may not can understand all about biology, but I do want to understand about the ology of Jesus. I may not be smart enough to comprehend psychology and the study of the human mind, but I do want to have some grasp on the ology of Jesus. Yeah, because if I understand about Jesus and all the rest of the ologies, whether I know about them or not, are really not that important. Hey, are you going to pray with me tonight? Uh, dear God, in Jesus' name, we ask you to help us tonight. Touch me by your spirit. Touch me by your power. Touch me by your might. Help me somehow in some way to exalt you tonight, Lord. Help me to hide behind the cross, Lord. Help me not to know anything uh, but you and the Calvary and cross and the blood, Lord. Amen. I want you to be the emphasis of my message. I want you to be the pinnacle of my message. I want you to be the theme of my preaching. I want you to be the text of my preaching. I don't want you somewhere out in the back 40 but oh Lord. Even I want to talk about you. I want to preach about you. I want to sing about you. I want to think about you and somehow Lord if we can talk about you enough tonight that somehow you'll be lifted up and glorified and the saints of God will leave here blessed. He's been encouraged tonight and I'll give your name the glory for it. Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Turn around and tell somebody, Jesus, Jesus. is the ultimate ology. You may be seated. Even in the Bible we have various ologies. You got theology, which is the study of God. You got humanology, which is the study of of the spirit. You got soterology, which is a study of salvation. You've got thanktoology, which is a study of death. You got demonology, which is a study of demon. You have a ology for nearly almost everything in the Bible. You have ecclesiology, which is a study of the church. 
You've got eschatology, which is a study of the end time. Glory to God. Yeah, but I'm afraid folks even have, cap have capitalized and monopolized on a lot of ologies and they've left Jesus out. But I think we need to keep the main thing, the main thing. Well, glory to God. Yeah, and some folks they are all concerned about the Antichrist. Uh, they are not very concerned about the coming Christ. Even they can tell you about every understanding that they have uh, of every prophetic event in the Bible. But I'm going to tell you what the most important prophetic event that took place in the Bible. Amen. Isaiah prophesied about it. Uh, in Isaiah 7:14, said, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and be with child, uh, and she shall bring forth the first born son and thou shall call his name Emmanuel Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 9 and 6 for unto us amen it wasn't for heaven it wasn't for the angels he didn't come for the serpents he didn't come for the cherubims he didn't come for the myriad amen multitude of the angelic being but he said but unto us the child is born and unto us the son is given and his name shall be called wonderful counselor he is not a mighty God but he is the mighty God and the everlasting father and the prince I mean, that is the most important prophecy in your Bible all the rest of the prophecies in your Bible circle around that that's why Ezekiel saw him. He is a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Glory in the Old Testament. Jesus is veiled in the New Testament. Amen. Jesus is unveiled. In the Old Testament, Jesus is wrapped. In the New Testament, Jesus is unwrapped. In the Old Testament, amen, Jesus is folded. And in the New Testament, he is unfolded. In the Old Testament, Jesus is the innermost. But in the New Testament, Jesus is the uttermost. In the Old Testament, Jesus is contained. And in the New Testament, Jesus is explained. In the Old Testament, Jesus is concealed. And in the New Testament, Jesus is revealed. In the Old Testament, he is the, the indicator is Jesus. And in the New Testament, Testament, the illustrator is Jesus. In the Old Testament, he tells of the panoramic Jesus. Amen. And all of the and all of the types and all of the shadows. Amen. But in the New Testament, Amen. He is a cyclosemantic Jesus that you can see him as he is. Amen. In the Old Testament, Jesus, oh glory to God, is in a picture. Amen. He's in the Amen. He's in the, the brazen altar. He's in a ram in a bush. Amen. He's in a fire. Oh, glory to God in a bush. And the bush is not consumed. He's in a cloud by day and a fire by night. He's in the brazen labor. He's in the brazen amen altar. He is in the gate to the tabernacle. He, oh, yes, he is. He is pictured on the lampstand and he's seen on the table of shoe bread. You can see his picture. Uh, oh, glory be to God uh, on the altar of incense. Uh, and when you get inside the holies of holy, uh, amen, he's the ark of the covenant. Uh, amen, and the mercy seat. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, uh, Jesus uh, is seen as a picture. Uh, but in the New Testament, uh, Jesus is seen uh, as a person. Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, he is a shadow. Uh, uh, but in the New Testament, uh, he is is the substance in the Old Testament we see the eternity of Jesus but in the New Testament we see the paternity of Jesus in the Old Testament he is the intimate Jesus but in the New Testament he is the ultimate Jesus Glory. hallelujah hallelujah Glory, 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 
Thank God for the blood. Hallelujah. It's different. Scripture says what God is. John 4, 24 says God is a spirit. Amen. God is spirit. Then it said God is love. And it said God is a consuming fire. And it said God is light. Even God, God don't have a spirit. Even God is spirit. Glory to God. God does not have a light. God is light. God does not have a fire. Hey, God is fire. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, his spirit is his essence. His light is his character. His love is his compassion. And his fire is his holiness. I'm talking about Jesus. 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 He's the ultimate. He is the ultimate ology. Woo, glory to God. Hey, so I turn around and tell somebody about you. Tell me a little bit more about Jesus. Well, no, a little bit more about Jesus. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Jesus was the son of man. On his mother's side, but the Son of God on his father's side. He was the seed of David on his mother's side, but the root of David on his father's side. He was a preacher on his mother's side, but he was the creator on his father's side. He was finite on his mother's side, but he was infinite on his father's side. He was natural on his mother's side, but he was supernatural on his father's side. He was physical on his mother's side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was spiritual on his father's side. He was temporal on his mother's side but he was eternal on his father's side I don't know how tall he was but if it was six foot he was six foot on his mother's side but he fills all spaces and places on his father's side yeah he walked by the seaside on his mother's side, but he walked on the sea on his father's side. Jesus prayed in the garden on his mother's side, but he answered prayer on his father's side. He was tempted by the devil on his mother's side, but it is he who strengthens you when you are tempted on his father's side. Hey, hey. Lord, he was 33 years old on his mother's side, but he was the ancient of days on his father's side. He died on the cross on his mother's side, but he rose from the dead, glory be to God, on his father's side. He took, oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, he did. He got his body from his mother and from his mother's side, but he got his blood from his father's side. Amen. There on the cross, he redeemed us as son. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about he finished the work of redemption. Can you say, praise the Lord? Go around and tell somebody, Jesus, the ultimate ology. Woo! Let me get a little more wind, praise the Lord. He said it was Alpha, and he's Omega. Alpha and Omega. Amen. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. And Omega is the last. Amen. In Genesis 17 and 1, he is A, the Almighty God. Amen. In Luke 1, 68, he is the B, he is the blessed God. Amen. In 1 Peter 5 and 7, he is the C, he is the caring God. 
In Daniel 3.15, he is the D, he is the delivering God. Amen. In Deuteronomy 33 and 27, he is the E, he's the eternal God. Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, he is the F, he is the faithful God. Titus 2 and 13, he is the G, he is the great God. Oh, glory to God. Leviticus 19 and 2, he is the H, he is the holy God. Amen. Job 32 and 8 he is the he is the I he is the inspiring God Exodus 20 and 4 he is J he is the jealous God Psalm 17 and 8 he is the K he is the keeping God 1 John 4 and 8 he is the L he is the loving God. Amen. Isaiah 9 and 6. He is the M. He is the mighty God. Amen. James 5 and 8. He is the N. He is the nigh God. Amen. Matthew 28 and 18. He is the O. He is the omnipotent God. Amen. Philippians 1 and 6. He is the P. He is the performing God. 1 Timothy 6 and 13. He is the Q. He is the quickening God. Amen. Nehemiah 9 and 17. He is the R. He is the ready God. Isaiah 35 and 4. He is the S. He is the saving God. John 17 and 3. He is the T. He is the true God. Woo. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 32 and 27. He is the you. He is the unlimited God. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. He is the V. He is the very God. 1 uh, John, St. John 5 and 17. He is the W. He is the working God. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. He is the X. Because the eyes of the Lord go to and fro in the earth. Amen. Looking at everybody. He is that x-ray God. Why? In Matthew 27 and 50, he is the yielding God. And in St. John 2 and 17, he is the Z. He is the zealous God. Amen. Can you clap your hands? Somebody, Jesus, Jesus is the ultimate ology. Jesus, Jesus is the ultimate ology. No wonder Paul said, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's all of God's love in a body. He's all of God's grace in a body. He's all of God's goodness in a body. He's all of God's holiness in a body. He's all of God's redemption in a body. He's all of God's salvation in a body. He's all of God's holiness in a body. Hey, all that heaven was and all that heaven is and all that heaven ever will be was manifest in that body. Glory. Glory, glory. The first man, Adam, got us on the hook. And the second man, Adam, got us off the hook. The first man committed suicide. And the second man was executed. The first man was able to sin. And the second man was free from sin. The first man put us down. And the second man picked us up. The first man put us out. And the second man brought us in. The first man poisoned us. And the second man purified us. The first man ate from the tree. And the second man died on the tree. The first man ruined us. And the second man redeemed us. The first man cursed us. And the second man blessed us. The first man hurt us. But the second man, amen, healed us. The second man is a Lord from heaven. Even that came down to die. Even for the sins that was committed by the first man and all of his offspring. Can he say, praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Tell somebody, Jesus is the ultimate. He's the ultimate knowledge. That's why I said in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Glory to God. Woo! Hey, hey. Glory to God. If you want to know God, you've got to know the Father. If you want to see God, you've got to see the Son. If you want to feel God, you've got to get the Holy Ghost. In the Father, He is eternal. In the Son, He is external. In the Holy Ghost, He is internal. In the Father, He is eternal. In the Son, He is external because He is the image of the invisible God. And in the Holy Ghost, He's living inside of me. He's walking inside of me. He's talking inside of me. Let's give the Lord a good hand. I need to be 20 pounds lighter have my lungs that I had when I was 25. The wind that I had to preach like I want to preach this tonight. Matthew 8, 1 through 4, he was omnipotent over disease. Matthew 8 and 16, he was omnipotent over demons. Matthew 9 and 9, he was omnipotent over men. Matthew 8 and 26, he was omnipotent over nature. Amen. Glory be to God. Matthew 9, 1 through 8, he was omnipotent over sin. Matthew 9, 10 through 17, he was omnipotent over tradition. Amen. Luke 7, 14 and 15, he was omnipotent over death. John 1 and 48, he was omniscient because he knew who Nathaniel was when Philip called him and knew his name and knew what he was doing. Amen. He was omniscient because he knew the plot of Judas in John 6 and 70. Amen. He was omniscient because he knew the heart of the Pharisees in Matthew 12 and 25. Amen. He was omniscient because he knew the thoughts of the scribes in Matthew 9, 3 and 4. He was omniscient because he knew the sincerity of one scribe in John 12 and 34. Amen. In John 4 and 24. Amen. He was omniscient because he knew the history of the Samaritan woman. Oh, glory to God. Amen. John 9, 46 and 47, he was omniscient because he knew the problems of his disciples. And not only was he omniscient, oh, glory to God, and not not only was he omnipotent, amen, but he was also omnipresent because he said in Matthew 18 and 20, where two or three are gathered together in the midst, he said, I will be in the midst. Glory to God. He was worshipped by God. He was worshipped as God by the angels. Hebrews 1 and verse 6. He is worshipped as God by the shepherds. Luke 2 and 18. He was worshipped as God by the wise men. Matthew 2, 3 through 11. He was worshipped as God by the leopard in Matthew 8 and 2. He was worshipped by God by the ruler even in Matthew 9 and 18. He was worshipped as God God by the Canaanite woman, uh, Matthew 15 and 25. Uh, he was worshipped as God by mother, uh, Matthew 20 and 20. Uh, he was worshipped as God by a maniac, uh, even Mark 5 and 6. Uh, he was worshipped as God by a man born blind, uh, John 9 and 38. Uh, he is worshipped as God by Thomas, uh, John 20, 28. Oh, yes, he was. Uh, amen. He was worshipped as God by some Greeks, uh, amen, John. 12, 20, and 21. He was worshipped as God by his apostles. Matthew 14 and 33 and 28 and 9. Glory to God. As 
God, he forgave sin. Mark 2, verse 5, as God, he judges. John 5 and 22, as God, he saves. Amen, Matthew 18, 11, Stephen called him God. Amen, Acts 7 and verse 59, the eunuch called him God. In John 8 and 37, Paul called him God. Amen, in Galatians 2 and 20, 1 Timothy 3, 16, Colossians 2 and 9, and Titus 2 and verse 13, Peter called him God. In 1 Peter 3 and 22, and 2 Peter 1 and 17, Jude called him God. In Jude verse 25, James called him God. In James 2 and 1, John called him God. In 1 John 5 and 20, Jesus! is the ultimate ology. Well, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd go another 30 minutes, but I'd need an oxygen machine. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Can I sing an old Kentucky song? I I, I am that spoke to Moses in the burning bush afar. I am the God of Abraham. The bright and morning star. I am the rose of Sharon. The beginning from whence I came. I am the creator. But Jesus is my name. Oh, who do you say I am? From whence do you say I came? Do you know the Father? Can you tell his name? In Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead, don't you see? Jesus is the great I am. The Lord of Lord is he. I was before Abraham. He rejoiced to see my day. When Jesus spoke these precious words, they want to stone him right away. Why do you stone me, Jesus said, in a holy sweet command? Because you say, because you say, you're the great I am. We believe you're just a man. Paul went down in the middle of the road. And gotten a terrible fix. I'm Jesus whom thou persecute. Why kick against the pricks? Arise and go to Ananias. And there you'll find a man. Paul went preaching to those Jews. Jesus was the great I am. Well, oh, oh, oh. Who do you say I am? From whence do you say I came? Do you know my father? Can you tell his name? In Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead, don't you see? Jesus is the great I am, the Lord of all is he. Isaiah said he was the mighty God. The high and lofty one. God manifest 